but princess, I've decided I know exactly how to teach you to be good. All the other lessons have been useless so far. Please, just trust me. To put my trust in someone is weakness. I'm going to teach you how to... Ruffle, why? <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to flirt. God damn it. No. <laughs>
Slowly, I bring it to my lips and bite off a small petal. Aw, chocolate. Yay, it's actually pretty good. I stuff the little flower back into the bag and make my way downstairs. The marching is not busy this early in the morning, but everyone is starting on their chores. At least, I assume as much when I see Anise and then Walt, who is helping her stack things. Then I hear rising voices and realize that all, not all is calm. Oh, God, please don't. Ruffle, are you going to start with karma again? Please, no, I love you both. At least I don't have to pretend to be something I'm not. You say you're not pretending when you go out, flir go around flirting with all of the female patrons di day in and day out. You cannot seriously mean all of the drivel you spout. Oh God, please, babies, please don't fight. I love you both equally, okay? Don't do this to me. <laughs> Karma and Rumpel stand on opposite sides of a table, staring each other down. A teacup filled with what looks to be cool tea sits close to Karma, abandoned. Flirting with a lady is not a crime. One day your flirting is going to get you into even more trouble than it already has. It probably has. That's why he's cursed. Probably. I'm say I'm just saying, probably. I've never had a lady said I mistreated her. Not once. Or maybe you just don't remember it. Rumpel. Oh, I'm sure many could attest to being more than slightly annoyed. You're only jealous that I can speak to ladies without a disguise, aren't you? Oh god, please. Ruffle. I already know the struggles for karma or Claude. Oh Jesus, please don't do that. Don't do that. Please. Uh oh god, now he's upset. Oh no, karma. I, I want to give karma a hug. Ooh. Karma slams his hand down on the table, shaking it. The tavern grows quiet. Walls looks over, his eyebrows furrowed with worry. If you so much as make one more comment about my curse, then stop making comments about how I speak. The two continue to glare at each other, and it almost looks as if Karma might circle the table and slap him, but the fight freezes as Jurian strides up to the two men. It's too early for the two of you to already be at each other's throats. But he started it! All I did was, was bleh, all I did was make a comment. He was the one that picked a fight. There you go again, twisting words. Jirin stomps on the ground. The two men once again turn to look at her. It's my job to break up unnecessary fights, and I will do it. If you two must continue fighting, go do it somewhere else, like the forest, where you can't disturb anyone. Both men turn away from each other, obviously agitated. Thank you, Jurian! Rumpel's expression is cloudy as he makes his way over to the bar to help begin helping set the tables. Jurian no blah, blah, blah. I can't read. <laughs> Jurian notice, notices me watching. She waves at me with a terse smile on her face. Sorry you had to wake up to that, princess. I shrug as I make my way over to Mr. Broom. It is like waking up to two children arguing. Ha <laughs> ha that's funny. Agreed wholeheartedly. Jurian sighs before looking at me thoughtfully. Maybe you could have a word with Rumpel later. I have no idea how their argument even started, but maybe you can get to the bottom of it. I am not a babysitter. But I'd heard the two of you were partners? <sighs> <coughs> anyway, hopefully this doesn't happen again. Good luck with your work today, princess. Okay, bye! Jirin walks off, villagent as always. I notice Garland looking at her from the bar, a slight frown on his face. I start working around the tavern, starting first with the cleaning and then with the stacking. Dolora makes, m makes snide remarks about my slowness as I work. Oh, Dolora, I love you, but please be quiet. And I try my best to ignore her while occasionally throwing her insults back at her. It is as, it is as if she has nothing better to do. Probably. The door to the tavern opens, and Parfait steps inside with a bright smile. She looks more energetic than usual. I wonder if this is because of Rumpel's medicine suggestions. Later, I manage to catch Rumpel when the two of us are both on break. He looks pleased to see me until I mention Karma. Uh, 
I have to mention karma, sweetie, okay? Don't be sour. Why were the two of you fighting earlier? What a sad day it is that the princess talks about another man to my face. Ruffle, I love you. Please stop. I will always love karma anyway. <laughs> Just answer me. I was getting ready for the events of today, as always, speaking to the lovely woman who filled her in and out of this place. When the beast appeared behind me. Funny you should mention that! Um... Hmm... Um... <laughs> I'm just gonna not. Even his insults are dramatic. Your flirting is distracting me, he proclaimed. Well, your flirting is annoying. But all I'm doing is complimenting women. I'm not impending anyone's work. I thought that the only reason he was calling me out on such a thing was because he was actually jealous. You should have seen his scalp. This man is not jealous. Ruffle, please. I love you, please. And here we go. So I politely told him to mind his business, but he was relentless, and when he continued to insult my demeanor, well, I had to say something back, but I wasn't the one who to start the fight. I swear, they both really do sound like children. No doubt Karma would be blaming Rumple. Princess, you don't really think I'm so confrontational, do you? I think Karma is far more confrontational than Rumple, but it does not help that Rumple always snaps back at him. The two of you are both at fault. But Princess! In the end, you were still having a childish argument. I think that Rumple might try to protest again, and I'm surprised when he shrugs his shoulders and sighs. Yes, who was childish? Because that man is a child. Um, about that, the only man that's a child here is Walt. Okay. I roll my eyes. Ah, oh, your irritated skull chills my heart, princess. I feel a tinge of excitement. Please don't. I am leaving now. There is really no point in having this conversation. It is a problem between Karma and Rumple. They aren't children. They can figure this out on their own. Oh, princess of my heart, why must you depart so early? I ignore Rumple and leave him standing where he is as I return to my shift a little early. Okay, bye! Honestly, I would rather much focus on work than Rumple. He can be just as tiring, if not more. Though, after what happened last night, I do not think he is as terrible as I thought. The days go on and Rumpel and I speak only briefly during our breaks. Every day I eat another piece of the lily until only one is remaining. Woo! One afternoon, just before my break, Rumpel approaches me with a mischievous smile on his face. What are you up to now? My lovely princess, how are you today? God, I feel like you have something planned for me and I don't like it. What do you want? Your cold shoulder is enticing. I have one more table to serve. Do not bother me. But princess, I have decided I know exactly how to teach you to be good. All of your other lessons have been useless so far. Please, just trust me. To put my trust in someone is weakness. I'm going to teach you how to... Ruffle, why? I'm going to teach you how to flirt. God damn it. No. <laughs> Me personally, I, I, I don't know. I flirt without realizing it. But when I actually have a crush on someone, I just come with the cheesiest shit. And thus how I landed a girlfriend. <laughs> just ask her. Oh god, the lame is the lame flirt the flirting I did with her. And she was just like, please stop. And she was just completely blushing and everything. I was just like, now I'm gonna keep going with my life. I'm like, please, inside my head, I'm like, please stop. You're you're embarrassing yourself. And I was like, nah, you know. <laughs> Rumple, no, that's not what you're gonna do. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just. What? First step to flirting is eye contact, princess. You didn't even hear me out first. Wait, but why are you? Rumble points at my customer, a young man sitting right beside the window. The second is a smile. Smile, princess, because I'm sure you look even more stunning when you do. Then you start a conversation with him. Body language is important. 
You're, there are certain signals that key men into the fact that a woman is interested in them. I think playing with your hair is one. A gentle tap on the shoulder is another. Oh, fucking why? I should have expected Rumble to spout this sort of nonsense. Um, princess? The customer's been waiting for a while now. Is something wrong? I noticed the customer looking at me expectantly. He's just some man. The usual customer that I actually see often. Oh, and princess, don't forget the compliments. Make them as delicate and illustrative as you can. Oh, God. I move away from Rumpel before you can muddle my thoughts any further. Already my feet feel like lead. I find myself staring at the man for far too long. The way he stares back at me is like... Stares back at me. His expression so unreadable. Suddenly makes me feel more uncomfortable. Do I really have to do what Rumpel says? I stop in front of the man and set down his tray. My eyes still on his. I do not have to follow Rumpel's advice. But for some reason... Achoo! Excuse me. Wait. Achoo! Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. My lips quirk. The smile on my lips, though, lasts half of all... Lasts all of half a second. Are... Are you okay? Um... Safe. Oh, Lord. Um... Uh... What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? A part of me is telling me to not flirt, but at the same time, it's like, what happens if I tried? Oh, I didn't mean to click on that choice. <laughs> Good thing I saved, but I was gonna say, let me at least attempt to flirt. <laughs> I can feel Rumpel smiling at my back. If this were anyone else but him, I would think it was some kind of prank. But considering this, this is the way Rumpel acts all the time, maybe he's really trying to help me. I tried to recall how he flirted with his customers before. I could not help no but notice. I'm just like reading in kind of a monotone voice, kind of. Like attempting to flirt because she's like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to try anyway. I could not help but notice you were all alone, sir. I'm always alone. My heart is thumping far too loudly in my chest. What kind of things does Rumpel usually say? Madam, you are the most beautiful thief I've ever met. For it is you who has stolen my heart and stolen my gaze. <laughs> oh, God, so cheesy. Your eyes are more captivating than the stars, my sweet. If I could, I would stare at them, into them forever and lose myself in their majesty. You remind me of a rose with thorns. But the thorns are what makes the rose so alluring. All he does is spout complimentary gibberish. I will try to do the same. Uh, how is it that you would always be alone when you have such lovely eyes? Um, <laughs> this feels so uncomfortable for me too. Oh god. The customer stares at me, baffled. I force myself to continue. Your eyes remind me of the leaves in fall as they flutter beneath the bright gaze of the sun, and... I stop. The words, nothing more like a sh than a shadow lie, make me feel strangely hollow. The man is just staring at me, but he looks uncomfortable. Still, I do not think he is anywhere near as uncomfortable as I am. <laughs> Ditto to that. Ma'am? Perhaps you would... My voice trails off. I bite my lips so hard I can taste something metallic. The man's expression is a mixture of awe and perplexity. I immediately turn away from him and walk off. My whole face is hot and I can feel anger boiling deep down inside of me. Oh, fuck. Oh, that? Okay. Ah, uh, princess. Leave me alone. But princess, we're not done. I do not care. I ignore everyone's gazes as I make my way as quickly as I possibly can up the stairs and to my room. There, I collapse on my bed and lay there with my arms outstretched. Why would I have ever even thought of taking Rumpel's advice? Hey, Gain does a point to love him. <laughs> Hours go by and eventually I realize that it is time to help Anis th with the night chores. Now I am helping her restock some of the bottles that Waltz and Karma brought back from town. I hope Anis does not mention what happened earlier today. I slip out of bed and head down to the main area of the tavern. The room is mostly quiet by the time I go downstairs. Parfait and Laura are talking to each other at a table. 
Karma passes by me as I walk downstairs. He looks exhausted and oddly frustrated. Oh, baby, what's wrong? Come here. I'm going to pat you and hug you. My husband. Oh, okay, bye. <laughs> I make my way over to Ennis, who is already putting bottles on the shelves. Oh, princess, are you okay now? I'm fine. Now, what did you need me to do? Ennis explains how restocking works. She shows me the labels on the shelves and explains that the empty spots are where the new bottles go. It is not a hard job, and one I can easily do without thinking too hard. For a while, the only sounds that can be heard in the margin are the bottles clinking against each other. Underneath, that is the murmuring between Parfait and Laura. I have no idea what they are talking about, but they look serious, so it must be something important. Um, so princess, can I ask what life was it like at the palace? Right. She cannot remember working in the palace before. I don't mean to pry. I was just trying to make conversation. I would rather not. Oh, okay. Eventually, Parfait and Dolores stand from their seats and move to another room to continue their conversation. Okay, bye! Annie breaks the silence again. The tavern is nice when it's quiet like this, isn't it? You can hear the sounds outside if you open a window. My hands move stiffly, placing bottles on the shelves by label. Ooh, excuse me. All I want to do is get the work done and then return to my room. It was like this at the old place that I used to work. I was hired by a rich family to be their maid. Their mansion was a beautiful place. You could hear the crickets if you were by the windows of the, on the bottom floor. It seems like her memory has been twisted by my curse, so she cannot remember working at the palace. All she remembers is working for a rich family. It was a nice place, princess. There was a girl close to my age that had a radiant smile. Radiant smile. She must be talking about Emmeline. The head of the mansion is a really kind man, and... She grows suddenly quiet, a look of confusion coming to her face. She pauses and then shakes her head. I can't seem to remember everyone that was there, but I'm pretty sure they were all good people. At least, I'd like to think so. I was just a bad maid. She was. Because of her, Dolores' dress was torn. I... I was too ashamed to tell one of the mistresses that I couldn't save her doll. Save her doll? Annie looks down, her smile wistful. I was fired on my first day because I couldn't save one of the mistress's dolls. I was the one cleaning her shelves that day, and when I was in and when I went in I saw a crow had come in through the open window and was pecking at one of the dolls. I shoot it away, but it, I was too late. The doll had a little rip in its dress and I was fired for not doing my job properly. So it wasn't Annie's who ripped the Laura's dress, but a bird? Is this why Dolores insisted Anise deserves an apology? What happened after you were fired? Lady Perfect found me on the streets. I couldn't go back to my aunt's house. Not after what happened. She never liked me anyway. Anise's face clouds briefly with sorrow, but the expression is short-lived. I can never forget the day I met Lady Parfait. I told her I would be able to help her and anyone else that got sick. That I can even do all the cooking since I've been making meals for my father since I was a young girl. I begged her to take me in as she did. I owe Lady Parfait a lot. Why didn't you go back to your father after you were fired? My father passed away a while ago. My mother died giving birth to me. My father was an herbalist, and he taught me a lot while he was still with me. So before Rumpel came in, I helped Lady Parfait with herbal remedies. So you have no one. That's what I thought. But now I have everyone here. The Marchant is my family now. Family. Princess, we're all happy to have you here too. You really have brought around the Marchant. And I can tell Rumpel's happy to have you as a partner. The memory of what happened today slowly seeps back into my mind. I cannot help the irritation bubbling up inside of me. I know he's a little overwhelming. But I'm pretty sure Rumpel's really just trying to help you out. Just like he's helping Lady Parfait. It's not the same thing at all. The two of us continue working until Anise makes another wistful comment. The place I worked before this. I felt like there was some warmth in that gigantic home, but it was stifled. That place isn't warm at all. I speak the words without even meaning to. Anise looks up at me curiously. 
The king suddenly started speaking to me when mother died, but it was never enough. Before that, he was cold and distant, and even now, he favors his new wife and children over me. There were people, but they all wore fake smiles, and my father, was the wor he was the worst of all. I may as well never have... I may as well have never existed to him. Princess, I'm sorry. For what? You're talking about the palace, right? The king always seemed so nice. He puts his kingdom before his children. And he fidgets nervously. I'm sorry. Apologies are not going to change the past. Sometimes apologizing seems like all we can do when we can't change something that's already happening already happened. I think about Ennis, who tried to save my doll, and the way I fired her that day. Rubble told me once that all I had to do was listen to people to sympathize with them. Could that also be true for finding out the truth? All I can do is make up for what I did. All I can do to make up for what I did to her is, um, save? Well, of course the good, noble thing to do is to apologize. I'm sorry. Annie looks at me clearly shocked. She stares at me. F she stares for a few moments before I scowl at her. Staring is rude. Oh, I was just. Why are you apologizing to me, princess? It's for something I did that you wouldn't remember. That I wouldn't remember? You should tell me. I promise I won't hold it against you. It's not important. Anise's eyes are suddenly downcast, and no matter the attempt, her smile isn't as bright as it once was. I quickly finish stacking the bottles on the shelves. I am done. Anise turns to look at me with an unusually tired expression on her face. Thank you for listening to me, princess, and for telling me a little bit about yourself, too. I feel like I might have said too much. I do not respond to Ennis, but instead choose to head out the front door. Ennis asks where I'm going, but I just ignore her. I think about heading to town, but then reconsider. I decide to head to the forest instead. Was that not the right choice? Jesus Christ, I'm making a lot of wrong choices today. Um, well... I'll just keep that choice for now, because I feel like apolo- I don't want to just be silent. I feel like apologizing to her is actually the noble thing to do. I don't want to, like, leave her in the dark, so I'll just keep that choice. I make my way to the forest clearing. In the dark, everything feels a lot more comfortable. Here, I do not have to pretend to listen to anyone, and I do not have to talk about myself. I settle down on a rock and stare up at the sky. Oh, wow! I apologize, but Anis did not even understand my apology. And even now, I still cannot bring myself to trust those at the margin. I sigh and find myself speaking aloud. Maybe I am the Ice Princess. Ah, but have you seen the beautiful sculptures that can be made from an Ice Princess? Hello, Rumpel. <laughs> I turn to see Rumpel walking toward me, a broad grin on his face. Ice always sparkles in the sun. It glistens and stands so proudly where it's been sculpted. I stare at Rumpel blankly. He sighs and shakes his head. I'm sorry. That one was particularly bad, wasn't it? Very cheesy. He sits down beside me and his grin falters a little bit. Oh, they're so cute. I have no white lilies to give you this time, my sweet princess. But I will offer anything else you would need from me to apologize for my advice earlier today. I can offer anything. My words. Oh my god. Boy, please. My words. My body. I cut up off as I am not in the mood for his usual behavior. You were always like this. All you ever do is flirt. Any meaningful thing you try to, you try to say is lost in the flattery you constantly give to people. It is shallow. You're right. What? I stare at him. Rubble is still smiling, but it is not the same confident grin he wore earlier. Somewhere deep in my memories, I remember someone telling me off just like this. Many people enjoy flattery, princess, and a lot of people are receptive to flirting. But nothing can measure up to a genuine compliment. But I stand what I, by what I said before, in that making a person happy is a good deed. Look, I'll show you. 
Robo shifts so that he's looking right at me, and I notice that his smile is gone. Rena, of all the women I've met, you are the most straightforward and honest. Many do not have the courage or the confidence to exhibit those qualities. And that's why I admire you, and why I will always take your words to heart, because I know you will always speak the truth. I look into Rumble's eyes, which still have a gentle shimmer despite the darkness. For a few mo moments, his words float ab around in my head. No one has ever called my bluntness honesty before, and no one has ever complimented me for it. Rumble told me that b before that I deserve to be spoiled. Maybe it's because he sees the things I do in a more positive light? My, my, you're struck speechless by that, aren't you? You look cute with your cheeks so rosy, my sweet princess. I glare at him and Rumble just laughs in response. I put a hand to my cheek, suddenly self-conscious. Rumble smiles at me, but it is not the usual playful smile. Right now, he almost looks serious. Did he mean what he just said? Uh, save! Uh, we gotta be Sundere though! I wanted to- uh, I wanna ask if he meant it! But, 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 yeah, my friend told me to be Sundere. Um, uh, fine, we'll tell him off. Be Sundere about it. Why did you have to be so dramatic when you gave me that compliment? I was dramatic? I hate doing this! It made him feel bad! I don't want to make him feel bad! I cross my arms and Rumpel grins at me. I can't help it, Princess. I'm dramatic by nature. A compliment is, in some ways, a performance. So you do not mean what you said. Yeah. No, I did! I swear I did! I was trying to show you how making a person happy could be a good deed. Complimenting a person on appearance appearances is easier than complimenting them on their demeanor. You have to know a person for that. Oh. I meant what I said, princess. And I swear that it wasn't just me trying to weave spectacular words together. Well, uh, we got a better outcome of telling him off, but still, why do we have to be Sundere to gain points? Does he like Sundere, woman? Jesus. Earlier, I bet you me and Annie's happy, too. You were spying on our conversation? I would never! I just happened to be making my way down the stairs very slowly. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. You don't even know what I was apologizing for. No, but you thought you had to after listen you listened to her, didn't you? I listened far more than you do. Princess, you shattered my heart so many times. There are permanent cracks. They can heal. But do not worry, the cracks in my heart allow even more of you to make your way into it. Um, never seen heart cracks that way before. Rumple awkwardly laughs when I remain silent. Anyway, there are different kinds of listening, princess. Listening to sympathize is one kind. Try to put yourself in someone's shoes. Try to understand them. That is one of those ways. Then there is the kind of listening that is shallow. One pretends to listen without ever letting the words into their heart. Words are fickle things. Mother always told me that people lie and that they would say whatever benefited them. It is foolish to trust words. What if Ennis has been lying to me? Why would I put so much blind faith in people? Because more often than not, people are good, princess. I let out an exasperated sigh. Sometimes I cannot tell if I'm angry or confused by rumble. Ah, oh, what a beautiful sound. It was as if the sweet wind itself was gently tickling my ear. I slide away from him and scowl. Your scowl is adorable too, and you have such delicate lips. Please stop. I love you, but please stop. Right. I'm still convinced that his earlier compliment was just a lie. How can he say something genuine and then slide right back into this pitiful flattery? For a moment, silence falls and I find to my surprise that it is not awkward being alone with Rumple. Will you accept my apology for earlier? I promise I'll never try to get you to flirt with anyone ever again. Besides, if you flirted with another man and then grew fond of him, I would be devastated. That would never happen. You didn't let me finish. I was going to say that I would be devastated because that would mean that your heart belongs to someone else and... My heart belongs to no one. I will steal it like a thief in the night. Please don't. That will also never happen. 
If not that, then I'll settle with making you smile, at least once. Because I'm sure you would shine as brightly as the sun if you smiled. Yes! Her smile is precious. You have to protect it in your life. You are unreasonably persistent. Love is a persistent and eager princess. A man in love stops at nothing to win over the woman that he so adores. <sighs> you must be in love with many women. <clears throat> I stand up. I would appreciate you just complimenting me when you mean it. But princess, I mean every one of my compliments. I have no idea she did chat. Ch Dang it. Well, how do you pronounce this again? Chesties. Chesties. Ch chesty him right now. I don't know. <laughs> but at least I no longer have that in anger inside from earlier. It's been a long day, and I'm going to bed. Would you like company? Jesus Lord, you just reminded me of Eric. Like, I gotta go to bed. Bye, princess. If you need a bedfellow, uh, Eric, I love you, but not right now, please. <laughs> It's surprising. I love Eric. He's like Bay, but for Cinderella Phenomenon, my Bay is Karma. I don't know. Maybe Rumpel would be Bay. I don't know. <laughs> but we're just moving on. She's clearly angry, so no. Ah, I didn't mean. Good night, Rumpel. Good night, Princess Rena. I make my way back to the tavern, feeling surprisingly light. Still, even if Rumpel's words might make me happier than I care to admit, he's not doing a very good job of helping me with my curse. I might have to do this on my own, after all. Chapter 5, The Doctor. Ooh, Doctor, we're talking about Rumpel here, aren't we? Oh, God. <laughs> Rumpel's smile always makes my day. Uh, okay, guys. I think that's a good stopping point for today. We'll continue more of Cinderella Phenomenon in the next video. And hopefully get to see more of Car uh, not Karma. Rumpel's flirting thing. Flirting methods. Oh, God. That that was fun. And I love, I love Rumpel for everything that he's done. But at the same time, I just want to slap him. <laughs> You ever feel like conflict? You love a character and at one point, but you just want to slap him? That's me. With so many characters. Rumble included. <laughs> Alright. Well, we're halfway there. We're on chapter 5. So, uh, we'll continue in the chapter 5 in the next video. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys would like to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.